This is the Friday edition of the News Roundup, brought to you by EONI and Grand Ronde Hospital. Hi, Eastern Oregon. I'm Bree Troutman. And I'm Alex McCadden. Last month, as you may remember, there was extensive flooding in the Grand Ronde Valley. Eastern Oregon Alive is working on an extended story about the devastating impact of this flooding. Here's a preview of a roundtable conversation with several local farmers about the impact of the spring 2019 flooding. You go upriver on the Jenny White place, you know, I've had the loss in 2011 was not as severe, probably another 70, 80 acres this year that are actually underwater. And then when you go further up the river to the Morris place, we actually had more land that we lost. The water stayed there longer. And so it completely killed the crop instead of before I had some, some, some crop that was completely dead and some that was salvageable. How many acres is that total or, or percentage wise of what you found? Right at 600 acres. 600. Wow. It. So Colton, I think you're the only one that bought land this mm -hmm. year. <clears throat> well, I moved into that place in 2015. That's when it was first acquired. Um, and, you know, prior to that in 2011, when everything kind of flooded here in the valley again, um, Dan had always told me that those two wheel lines the seven foot wheels on him, you know, right behind my house, he would he could jet boat over the top of it. And every time I'd look out there, you know, and I heard that story, I thought, there's no way. I mean, I'm looking at the grade, and I'm like, there's just no way. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've got I've got photos from the back porch. The water got within about me to you of my back porch. And during that time, um, it, it would just gotten dark and it really started coming up. And I looked at my wife and said, you know what? I don't know what is going to transpire in the morning. I just don't. But it's too late to throw any hay bales out. I ain't got no sandbags. So say a prayer, cross your fingers, and see what happens. And the next morning, lo and behold, those wheel lines completely disappeared. Um, but it was, it was a weird phenomenon to look down there and not see a dike anywhere in sight. I mean, not north, south, east. I mean, of course, the west, there wasn't any, but um, just nothing but water. Um, uh, and the one field and the one crop. I had two crops planted. I had a field of wheat, which was down in what I call my dike field. It has a dike built clear around it. And talking to a couple other, some of you may know more than, more than me, but I was told originally that Buster Wells built those dikes around that one field down in there. And Kirk Inn was telling me that uh, Buster had always told him that since he built that, those dikes, he's never, ever seen water get into that field, besides seepage uh, from muskrat hole, gopher hole, whatever. Um, but again, it came clear over the top of all those dikes, submerged all the wheel lines and everything else. It took the alfalfa, it took my weed, it took uh, behind the house. I was <laughs> really looking forward to finally having a, what I consider a higher value crop, a grass crop, um, but it's now gone. I did get a seed bill in the mail. You did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, so so it's gone now, and um, but it it didn't. Fortunately, it didn't get into my house. It, it got right up, almost into one of my barns. But um, so you've got percentage-wise, how much of your place was? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Everything, except for the the tractor, the the two or three acres where my house and my barn sit. It doesn't just affect those people that were directly affected by the flood. You know, the fertilizer companies and the mm -hmm. spray companies and the pickup dealers and Walmart. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, how does that affect? What are you not going to spend money on this there that you would have spent money on otherwise? <clears throat> well, definitely anything that's crop related, but then you, any disposable income that you may have had, you know, to buy whatever else you wanted that your family needed uh, or just desired to have. It is all out the window now. Um, you go into a scarcity mode where you just start rat holing every dollar you got, and then you try to figure out how you're going to make a dollar. And then what's the risk of putting that dollar out there to try and make a dollar back when you may not get it back? And so maybe you're just better not better off than us not putting it out there. Um, yeah, it's a terrible effect. It's a terrible effect, and it trickles down greatly to a lot of people and a lot of businesses in the community. 
As Eastern Oregon University gets ready to close up for the end of the school year, there is a lot going on on campus. Assistant professors Nathan Prouty and Kyle Pfaffenbach sat down with us to fill us in about the 2019 Spring Symposium taking place on the campus next Wednesday, May 22nd at 9.15 a.m. So one of the things that Nate and I have been working on this year has been the uh, 2019 Spring Symposium. So the Spring Symposium is really a, uh, it's a, it's a celebration of um, undergrad achievement actually here at, at Eastern. So mainly um, junior and senior students are presenting uh, what a lot of times is their capstone work, um, but is also uh, can include like substantial coursework or project work or exhibits or um, all these different types of just academic work that students are producing here at EOU. Uh, we have one day where all those departments get together and really um, display all those accomplishments. The symposium is basically a big uh, exhibition, um, essentially, of uh, the achievements of the undergrads at Eastern Oregon University. So it's, it's basically the, the culmination of all their research, all of their um, hard academic work, and they present it to the community. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of stuff happening at this year's symposium. Um, you know, one of the great things is our participation has really gone up this year in terms of who's represented across uh, the campus. So we've got art students, um, we've got some Spanish students, I think, this year. Um, basically, every department is represented. Um, so I'm personally, being the art teacher, I'm really excited to see kind of what some of our art majors are going to present. Um, it's, it's a different format depending on kind of what uh, genre you're working in. So for the art majors, they give a small presentation, um, whereas some of the science, the chemistry and the science majors, they kind of do a poster board presentation. Um, so it's depending on what the student activity is, it's kind of live or it's more of an interactive kind of discussion between the public and the student based on their research. So the 2019 Spring Symposium is occurring on Wednesday, May 22nd. It's open to everybody in the public, um, community members as well as people on campus. So faculty, staff, student, we really wanna to have one of the, we have the best turnout in terms of presenters this year and we really wanna um, spread the word and get as many um, individuals attending as possible as well. So it's open to the community, it's happening. Um, the keynotes, uh, there's kind of an open breakfast, sort of a continental breakfast and, and sort of time to mingle from about 8.30 to 9.15 that morning. From 9.15 to 10.15 we have um, uh, the keynote, speaks, uh, keynote speakers in McKenzie Theater, and then starting at 10.30, going to about 2.30 in the afternoon, our poster exhibits, talks, panel presentations, the art studio is open in Ackerman. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just gonna be an all day event um, highlighting the hard work of our EOU students. Watch for the full interview about the Spring Symposium right here on Eastern Oregon Alive. Opening this weekend and continuing next weekend, is The Hunchback of Notre Dame, directed by Ken Wheeler. Hunchback opens tonight in McKenzie Theater at the EOU campus. Look for the full video already posted on Eastern Oregon Alive, featuring interviews from key cast members. It's election season once again. Many Oregon special districts and schools have their elections in May of odd years, including 25 local governments in Union County. Residents have until May 21st to return their ballots to any of eight drop boxes, including the Union County Clerk's Office or your local city hall. Offices up for election include the following. Cove Cemetery, Rural Fire, and School Districts. Elgin Cemetery, Rural Fire, Health, and School Districts. Imbler Fire and School Districts. Island City Cemetery and Sanitation Districts. LaGrande Cemetery, Rural Fire, and School District. North Powder Cemetery, School, and Rural Fire Districts. Union Cemetery, Rural Fire and School Districts. Somerville Cemetery, South County Health, and Blue Mountain Translator Districts. Thanks for sticking with us through that, Eastern Oregon Alive. Remember to turn in your ballots by May 21st. Thank you for watching Eastern Oregon Alive News Roundup. I'm Alex McCadden. And I'm Bree Troutman. We'll see you next time on the News Roundup.